work without motive. At the 42nd meeting of the Ramakrishna mission held at the premises number 57, Ramakantha Bo Street, Bagh Bazar, Calcutta on the 20th March 1898, Swami Vivekananda gave an address on work without motive and spoke to the following effect. When the Gita was first preached, there was then going on a great controversy between two sects. One party considered the Vedic yajnas and animal sacrifices and such like karmas to constitute the whole of religion. The other preached that the killing of numberless horses and cattle cannot be called religion. The people belonging to the latter party were mostly sannyasins and followers of jnana. They believed that the giving up of all work and the gaining of the knowledge of the self was the only path to moksha. By the preaching of his great doctrine of work without motive, the author of the Gita set at rest the disputes of these two antagonistic sects. Many are of opinion that the Gita was not written at the time of the Mahabharata, but was subsequently added to it. This is not correct. The special teachings of the Gita are to be found in every part of the Mahabharata, and if the Gita is to be expunged, as forming no part of it, every other portion of it which embodies the same teachings should be similarly treated. Now what is the meaning of working without motive? Nowadays, many understand it in the sense that one is to work in such a way that neither pleasure nor pain touches his mind. If this be its real meaning, then the animals might be said to work without motive. Some animals devour their own offspring and they do not feel any pangs at all in doing so. Robbers ruin other people by robbing them of their possessions. But if they feel quite callous to pleasure or pain, then they also would be working without motive. If the meaning of it be such, then one who has a stony heart, the worst of criminals, might be considered to be working without motive. The walls have no feelings of pleasure or pain, neither has a stone, and it cannot be said that they are working without motive. In the above sense, the doctrine is a potent instrument in the hands of the wicked. They would go on doing wicked deeds and would pronounce themselves as working without a motive. If such be the significance of working without a motive, then a fearful doctrine has been put forth by the preaching of the Gita. Certainly, this is not the meaning. Furthermore, if we look into the lives of those who were connected with the preaching of the Gita, we should find them living quite a different life. Arjuna killed Bhishma and Drona in battle, but withal, he sacrificed all his self-interest and desires and his lower self millions of times. Gita teaches Karma Yoga. We should work through yoga. Concentration. In such concentration in action, karma yoga, there is no consciousness of the lower ego present. The consciousness that I am doing this and that is never present when one works through yoga. The Western people do not understand this. They say that if there be no consciousness of ego, if this ego is gone, how then can a man work? But when one works with concentration, losing all consciousness of oneself, the work that is done will be infinitely better and this every one may have experienced in his own life. We perform many works subconsciously, such as the digestion of food, etc., many others consciously, and others again by becoming immersed in samadhi as it were, when there is no consciousness of the smaller ego. If the painter, losing the consciousness of his ego, becomes completely immersed in his painting, he will be able to produce masterpieces. The good cook concentrates his whole self on the food material he handles, he loses all other consciousness for the time being, but they are only able to do perfectly a single work in this way to which they are habituated. The Gita teaches that all work should be done thus. He who is one with the Lord through yoga performs all his works by becoming immersed in concentration and does not seek any personal benefit. Such a performance of work brings only good to the world. No evil can come out of it. Those who work thus never do anything for themselves. The result of every work is mixed with good and evil. There is no good work that has not a touch of evil in it. Like smoke round the fire, some evil always clings to work. We should engage in such works as bring the largest amount of good and the smallest measure of evil. Arjuna killed Bhishma and Drona. If this had not been done, Duryodhana could not have been conquered. The force of evil would have triumphed over the force of good and thus a great calamity would have fallen on the country. The government of the country would have been usurped by a body of proud, unrighteous kings, 
to the great misfortune of the people. Similarly, Shri Krishna killed Kamsa, Jarasandha and others who were tyrants, but not a single one of his deeds was done for himself. Every one of them was for the good of others. We are reading the Gita by candlelight, but numbers of insects are being burnt to death. Thus it is seen that some evil clings to work. Those who work without any consciousness of their lower ego are not affected with evil, for they work for the good of the world. To work without motive, to work unattached, brings the highest bliss and freedom. This secret of Karma Yoga is taught by the Lord Shri Krishna in the Gita.